Welcome to this episode of Video Drone by DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, we got the SEMA with the brushless mod back on the bench because, as you might remember in a prior episode, uh, one of the motors, as you can see here, still isn't working. So I want to check that out. And obviously, the alignment of the motors isn't working because, as you can see here, this is meant to spin uh, this way, clockwise. And this is actually spinning counter counterclockwise. I'll spit that out. While the black is spinning, I'll spit that out again, clockwise. So let's go ahead and open this up and see what's going on and see if we can't get this guy working and then swap the motors around. So let's get inside of it. Okay, so with the cover off, we see what the problem is. So uh, right here it is. So make sure I got the battery undone. So these, these two wires pulled out from the electronic speed controller. So I am going to... Plug them back in. They're pretty tight. Well, these are kind of these are kind of loose fitting. I'm a little bit surprised. I thought they went in a little bit tighter. This one's a little bit tighter. Um, what I might recommend is some heat shrink tubing over these uh, to hold them in place because that was the problem with this guy. So um, let's go ahead and with the motors like this, let's go ahead and re-energize it. And see if I get everything to spin up. Uh, yep, so this is a good sign. So we got all four, four, four motors spinning up now. So that's a good thing. I'm going to go ahead and swap these because it seems to be counterintuitive. Where um, I'm trying to think which would be which. I would consider this one clockwise, but it seems the black are the clockwise and the silver are the counterclockwise. So I'm going to go ahead and swap these. But I'm also going to, before I swap them, is I am going to take one apart because I've had a couple questions about these. And, uh, duh, before I do a dumb thing here, don't do what I just did. Uh, turn off the transmitter and unplug it. I got a little ahead of myself thinking about the video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of these plastic bases off and show you guys what's underneath here because I've gotten a few questions about that. Can you just buy the bases? And uh, I have not seen that. Um, and I'm not sure how these actually adapt. And if I get this last freaking screw out of here, it just doesn't want to come out. Okay. So there's the base of the motor. So one of the things, um, unlike a standard motor, um, it, it has sort of a flat base. I think, let me move this up here so you can see this a little bit better. Um, so this does not have what I would consider a standard uh, brushless motor base. You know, obviously this is a brushless motor, so I don't know if these were made for this uh, to keep this low profile. Uh, however, here is the base itself. Now, what, what I think I'm going to do, because this base is rather interesting, uh, because it sits on top of this, on top of this mounting bracket. And again, let me see if I can get this more to the center of the frame. So this sits on top of this mounting bracket. So what I can do is I can measure this guy up and then what, what can happen is I can develop a 3D model of this guy to make a brushless adapter that goes on here. Now, one of the things, obviously, with a standard brushless motor, what you'll have to do, as most folks do, is cut the tops of these out. And this is really light gauge polystyrene. You can cut this with a very sharp X-Acto knife or however you decide to do it. Um, however, I think I'm going to go about that. And so watch for another video uh, where I actually do this. And I'll probably put the results of my modified version up on Thingiverse because what I will probably also do is modify it um, to receive a standard or make it so you can modify it to receive a standard uh, brushless motor uh, to go on here. Uh, I don't know how well this is going to hold up, so if you do, do decide to use this, be it at your own risk, but I have had a lot of questions about it. Um, because the other thing that is also, I think, possible with this in the way I'm going to design it 
is, is so you can see and see a machined version of this out of say a solid piece of aluminum or something also because you know note a couple things there's pass-through holes here so you got to have pass-through holes here you have to have mounting holes it's a rather complex little object if you will so I don't think it'd be uh, uh, super easy to design but uh, it's definitely not impossible to de design so I'm gonna whip up a, a model of this and put it out there if you guys are interested Anyways, I just kind of wanted to share the insides of this uh, with you guys. So I'm going to go ahead and swap the motors around. Then we'll come back and take a look at the motors being swapped around. Uh, if I don't drop everything here. And I'm going to try tightening up things a little bit more with zip strips and that. And we'll see how that goes. Uh, so let's make those changes. Okay, welcome back. So one of the things I did, as I mentioned, I uh, wanted to show you guys. So I swapped the motors around. Um, so this is the front of the copter, so black and black, silver and silver. And so I've got this on here because we looked at this at the onset. And we needed to swap the motor positions. The other thing that I did um, is, remember we saw that, I think it was this one here, that two of the wires had come unplugged. Well, one of the things that I was doing as I was messing around with this, um, I noticed some more of them came loose. So one of the things I did, and I had planned on doing it anyway, but it really just showed me how loose these bullet connectors are, is I went and I put heat shrink tubing around all these to hold the connectors uh, firmly in place. Uh, so with this, I'm going to now go ahead and try buttoning this up and give it another shot again. So hopefully you found this interesting, and if you're kind of following along with this or looking at doing it yourself, I would say uh, right out the gate, I would put heat shrink tubing on these, and, and I probably should have did that anyway on the S500, which I'm building, I, I'm doing that, so uh, I should have probably thought about it for this one too, but I didn't. I thought these would uh, hold because they are insulated. So anyways, hopefully you found this interesting. If you did, give them a thumbs up. Uh, also, subscribe button is going to be coming up over there. Please subscribe. Hit me up below in the comments and hey we'll see you in the next video. Cheers.